Morning, we're remembering one of New York's funniest comedians, Jackie Mason. Yes, his politically incorrect humor and his accent garnered him a Tony Award and several Emmys. So joining us now this morning is Jeffrey Grant, who was a personal friend of Jackie's and spent several years as part of his entourage. Good morning, Jeffrey. We're so sorry about this loss. Good morning, Betty. Yeah, we lost one of the great ones, really. There's never been anyone like Jackie, and there never will be again. You know, as, a, as kind of a comedy historian, I can say that comfortably. He was a one of a kind. Absolutely. Very iconic, too. So let me ask you, um, tell us a little bit more about your story and how you met Jackie, because that gives us some insight into who he was. I first met Jackie when I was writing for Rodney Dangerfield back in the early 80s, and Jackie was performing at his club. And I got to be introduced to him, and we became fast friends. Um, there was quite a while when I became part of his entourage. We would, we would move every night to different diners in Manhattan. That was Jackie's favorite place to gather, was a diner. And um, <clears throat> it was a very eclectic yeah. group of very interesting people. And I wound up writing a movie for him, actually, around 2008, I think it was. Uh, uh, I even got to bring my mom to meet him backstage at one of his shows. And I treasure this picture of him and my mother. Oh, wow. Um, Very nice. He was one of the nicest guys in the world. When people would stop him on the street, he would stop off to talk to them for like half an hour. Yeah, that's what I was reading, that he kind of would stop and talk to anyone who would listen. He loved going up to the Catskills as well, right? And he comes Absolutely. from a, a family of rabbis, and he too became a rabbi. Resigned he was a rabbi. He yes. resigned to pursue his comedy career, right? And he even worked that into some of his comedy. And so tell well, me a little bit about how, where he got his humor from and how he incorporated his life experience into his comedy. You know, he was very real. He talked about, like, first of all, he was fearless. So he would approach any subject without, you know, censoring himself in any way. And uh, <clears throat> once he became a star, I mean, no other comedian ever had that many one-man shows on Broadway, sold-out shows. And as I said, I had the honor of writing a movie for him about terrorists who realized that they couldn't beat us militarily. So they planned to humiliate us in the eyes of the world by unleashing a dreaded pants virus that would destroy every pair of pants in the country, leaving us a nation of men in our underwear. Oh, boy. And, <laughs> and the Jackie horror was the of that. hero. The horror of the, <laughs> the whole nation of men in their underwear. And Jackie was the hero who wound up threatening them with a table and chair virus that would destroy every table and chair so that every time they sat down to eat, they'd fall on the floor. And he wound up, he wound up saving our country. Um, it was amazing. So one of those pictures was me reviewing the script with him. Uh -huh. But J Jackie took stories from his own life. And as you said, in the entourage, there was always at least one rabbi present. Yeah. He, he never forgot his roots. You know, he was you know, really was honest uh, with with his delivery sometimes. But I want to ask you, because some people might have found that a bit of an angry delivery he came across during his stand-up, right? Was that a part of his act, or was that part of who he was? Yeah, it was a persona. It was a stage persona. Um, I found him to be one of the nicest guys who would go out of his way to help you. Uh, he would promote you. You know, as a big star, a lot of times big stars don't do things like that. But I always found that he was exceedingly kind. Uh, when he saw a tape of mine once, that I didn't even show him. He did it on his own. And he went out of his way to tell me that I was very funny and he wanted me to start performing. And he was really an inspiration for me to go out on stage. Because I had been a comedy writer for many years and I wasn't performing. But through Jackie's influence, I started going out on stage to perform. Yeah. And that's the kind of guy he was. He, yeah. was, he was inspirational. And to me, that persona was just the stage persona. Yeah, Got it. understood. Yeah, because I understand from just doing some research on this morning, every person he came in contact with, he treated them as her family. And that's why even yes. the doctors and nurses who were treating him in his final days were in tears when he uh, finally passed away. Yeah, Jeffrey it's Gurian. A great loss. And so many comedians live to old ages, and I think laughter has a lot to do mm. with well, that. Well, yeah. yeah. Bringing sure. laughter to people. They're all in their 90s and 100. Milton Berle and Henny Youngman and George Burns Bob and Bob Hope. Hope. Yeah. They all lived well into their 90s and to 100 years old. That's so a I good think point. people. 
People should take notice of that, that laughter leads to longevity. Laughter is more nature's of it in medicine. This world. We sure do. And thank God, thank God we had him for so many years. Indeed. Indeed. Jeffrey Gurian, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah. I appreciate it with your insight, okay? And thanks so much for having me. It's great yes. to be on with you guys. You can check out Jeffrey's book, by the way, Fight the Fear, Overcoming Obstacles That Stand in Your Way. It is out now. Yeah.